The Lord be with you. This morning, our word from God is from Isaiah chapter 40. Um, we're going to do the, the hymn after the message, so uh, I'll just have you remain seated for the invocation and the reading, the message. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Isaiah chapter 40. Comfort, comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that her warfare is ended, that her iniquity is pardoned, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice cries, in the wilderness prepare the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up and every mountain and hill be made low. The uneven ground shall become level and the rough places a plain. And the glory of the Lord shall be revealed and all flesh shall, shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, cry. And I said, what shall I cry? All flesh is grass and all its beauty is like the flower of the field. The grass withers, the flower fades when the breath of the Lord blows on it. Surely the people are grass. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God will stand forever. Get you up to a high mountain, O Zion, herald of good news. Lift up your voice with strength, O Jerusalem, herald of good news. Lift it up, fear not. Say to the cities of Judah, Behold your God. Behold, the Lord God comes with might, and his arm rules for him. Behold, his reward is with him, and his recompense before him. He will tend his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms. He will carry them in his bosom, and gently lead those that are young, that are with young. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Dear Mom and Dad, I guess writing this letter is somewhat of a break in the midst of the craziest week of the semester, but I feel like if I don't write now, I might not get another letter to you. So maybe this is slight evidence of procrastination, but even more, maybe it's me reverting to something that is comforting during all this stress. Thinking of a week and a half from now, being at home sitting by the Christmas tree in my pajamas with some hot cider, playing with Skipper, talking with you both, seems like just about the greatest thing I can think of. Then I know Jake will be home soon after, and on the 23rd, Sarah and Woody will come. But I have to put that thought out of my mind so that I can study now. I've noticed that everyone seems to go into some very unique mode for what allows them to get everything done these days. People become more defined versions of themselves, seeking comfort or direction in different things to make it through this week. Maybe the smallest but most noticeable group is the cleaners and decorators. They brought back real decorations after Thanksgiving, have their rooms looking wonderful, everything picked up, laundry done, and it seems that domesticity fuels them. I don't know if they're doing well in their studying, but they present the best, even wearing clothes that match and aren't the same every day. Maybe achieving a similar end of not seeming to study are the opposite of the Christmas elves. They are the procrastinators. Not wanting to stereotype, but they are often guys. They've taken slovenly to a new level. You're thankful for the empty pizza boxes which help mask the smell of dirty laundry. Not wanting to stereotype, but this is the guys who have made high scores on video games their measure of academic success. Seeing how many seasons of How I Met Your Mother they can watch in an evening is a triumph. Perhaps the biggest group is the comfort food group. I am fighting hard to resist this temptation. Since at least Thanksgiving, macaroni and cheese, pumpkin bars and cake, cookies and french fries seem much more able to leap from the serving tables to plates in the cafeteria. Seasoned pros balance multiple plates 
and some people under 35 years old are even using trays to hold the bounty. The occasional slice of pizza has become the appetizer to every meal. The ice cream quota has become almost one-to-one for meals eaten with ice cream. Using up the extra falcon points in the nest has become a hobby for Becca and Becca. Then there are the studiers who have taken up residence in the library, kind of like the Occupy Wall Street movement. People with massive backpacks bent over at almost 45 degree angles from the sheer weight. Some featuring the wheeled luggage that rattles through the halls have claimed this territory. Groups of people with books spread all over, stray verbalizations of seven pages, 12 pages, group project, lesson plans, feed the frenzy of laptops working overtime. You can almost feel the stress level just walking in. I honestly don't know that they are getting more studying done, but for some, more time in the library is just the default mode. Surprisingly, Brooke has turned into the library dweller the last week or so. I think the stress of keeping her grades up really hit her since midterms. There are the christmas aholics who alternate between watching Elf, A Christmas Story, and Rudolph in between trying to recreate batches of their grandma's famous cookie recipes, sometimes settling for the slice and bake, or just eating the raw dough. They sometimes overlap with the cleaners, who are trying to reproduce a scene out of a snow globe. This is definitely Chelsea, from down the hall, who has now converted her roommate Rachel to drink the eggnog. Finally, there are the exercisers who reduce stress by working out or running. They have kicked into overdrive. Now that it's colder, the treadmills are in constant use, and the frustration of more pages to write seems to be countered by a few more reps. There are only a couple of Marys, though. I've wondered from time to time about Mary, Jesus' mother, who is probably younger than all of us, and got the news that she would be the mother of the Savior. And she simply seemed to accept it. I'm sure that on the inside she was anxious, but it sure seems like she was able to thrive in the midst of the stress in knowing that God's plan was working. I wonder what it says about us when we revert to the things that make us comfortable, and that we seek comfort in so many things. The Bible reading from Isaiah this week that starts out, Comfort, comfort my people. It's interesting. In light of the end of the semester, what everyone does to try to find comfort. It's so obvious. Isaiah doesn't talk about any of the things most of us are doing these days to bring ourselves comfort. He says, All flesh is like grass. And all is like the flower of the field. The grass withers and the flowers fade. But the word of our God will stand forever. All the cookies and carols can make us feel good for a while. But the hope that can come only from God is forever. Isaiah said that the comfort from God is that her iniquity is pardoned. I guess it's so obvious to say that Our sins are forgiven, and that's how we can have peace and comfort in the midst of all this busyness. I guess we need to be reminded of that during times when it should be so obvious that God has taken care of every care and burden we have by giving us a Savior by Jesus' life and death and his resurrection. And that's why Christmas is so significant. Well, chalk that up for another realization at good old CUW, who said you can't learn something new even this late in the semester. And that's all the news from Concordia, where your humble but awesome daughter continues the tradition of great humor, great people, great faith, and even a view of a great lake. Love, Jane.